Okay, so uh, we're on section 5.2, uh, and it's going to be transformations of sinusoidal functions. I just want to review 5.1 real briefly. Um, we, what we did was we explored the graphs of sine and cos. Um, I'm, I've graphed sine and cos here on the same axis, and we know we can figure out a few things uh, from the graph of sine in yellow here. Uh, we know that in our unit circle, the sine of 0 is 0. And the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So you have the point 0 and you have the point 1. And then the sine of pi is 0 and the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. The sine of 2 pi is back to 0. Periodic function, it repeats. This is one complete cycle or one complete period. The period length is the length literally from the start to the end of one cycle. Or if it's, uh, you know, if this is a continuous cycle and you see many cycles, you can see it as the start to the start, or from a crest to another crest, or whatever. Right? So the values in between come from the unit circle as well. The value for sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So this y value here is roughly, uh, on this graph, root 2 over 2. And we see that it's the exact same for the cosine graph, because pi over 4, you have identical values for sine and cos on your uh, unit circle. So, um, looking at the cos graph then in blue, we see that the cos of 0 is 1. So we got this point here. The cos of pi over 2 is 0, and so on. The cos of pi is negative 1. The cos of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and the cos of 2 pi is 1. So you fill in the uh, values kind of in between there, and we could fill in pi over 3 here, right here. And what's the cos value for pi over 3? Anyone? on your unit circle, did anyone know? What does it look like here on this graph? We talked about this yesterday. Yeah, it's half, right? It's exactly one half. So there's one, here's a half. Okay? So you fill in all these values. Again, over here would be pi over 6. And that value on your unit circle for cosine of pi over 6 is uh, root 3 over 2. Yeah, root 3 over 2. So, yeah, approximately, you know, 0.866 or so. So that's where you get this point from. Okay, so those are the graphs of sine and cos. Talked about period length. Um, the period length for a cos graph and sine graph is 2 pi. We talked about periodic functions in that they repeat, and sine and cos are clearly periodic functions because you have the same sort of pattern repeating you know, in both directions as well, but an unlimited number of times. Uh, we call sine and cos sinusoidal curves because they they uh, kind of emulate this sine graph. So even a cos, you know, that uh, that starts, uh, okay, if this, let's say this is zero here, cos that starts up here, it mimics the sine. If you extend this cos graph here back a little bit, you see how this from here is exact same shape as the sine. And so they're both sinusoidal. It's the shape, the general shape. Okay, we talked about um, uh, the period, um, I also want to mention that the period is kind of like one complete cycle. I use that terminology. And if you think back to physics or physical science, one complete cycle would be start to finish or crest to crest. It's also called a wavelength. Okay. The amplitude is the other thing we took a look at. Amplitude is the A value. So Y equals A sine theta. That's the amplitude. So that's the distance from the midpoint of uh, the curve to the maximum or the minimum point. So from here up is the amplitude, or from here down is also the amplitude. It's also the half, it's half of the range of the graph. Okay, so if you're talking about the range from negative one to positive one, that's, that's a range of two units, so the amplitude would be half of that. And that's the other way we looked at it yesterday too, is that the maximum minus the minimum, you get your range and the amplitude would be half of that. We're going to talk today about uh, more about stretches, right? A and B actually, you know, stretch the graph. So an amplitude that, uh, or A value that's greater than 1 stretches it in a vertical manner, right? It stretches it. If it's A equals 2, then this maximum point is 2 instead of 1. And then it's negative 2 instead of negative 1. So you can see A value as a vertical stretch. Okay. So, we took a look at A and B. Um, again, you should have all this, you know, it's just, it's just review. So there's A and here is B. 
Now I don't want to I don't want to talk about C just yet. Okay, but A and B, this is kind of what we we looked at, right? Um, the other way you could talk about B is a horizontal stretch, and that's the terminology. That's the words we used in the first chapter for talking about transformations. So if you have a B value of two, that is um, a horizontal compression. So that makes it uh, one cycle smaller. Okay, it's compressed by a factor of two, or you can say it's stretched by a factor of one half. Okay, and how do we get that? Well, we know that the period length for sine theta is two pi. The period length is defined as two pi over b for sine and cos. So in this particular case, if b right is two, we have two pi over two, or a period length of pi units. That's half of the original. So it is stretched by a factor of one half, or compressed by a factor of two. So it's two times as small. Okay. However way you slice it, the uh, the two graphs, uh, if they're compared, and here they are here. Well, this is actually two different graphs, but um, if this is a regular sine graph, then if you have a b value of two, it's the same height and everything. A value doesn't change. It's the same shape. Really, it's the same sort of general shape, but it's compressed. Okay, so a B value of two, you could also think, hey, there are two um, cycles where there was once one. Okay, so I'm gonna get drawing. Okay, so that's the that's the B value. Alright, so there's two pi, and this is y equals sine uh, two theta or two x. Okay? There would be two cycles in 2 pi, or each cycle would be half, 1 over b, half of the original period. So any, any questions so far? That, that's mostly, that's a review from 5.1. Um, there might have been some other stuff in there as well um, that we talked about, but do you need clarification on anything? Here, here's some, uh, this is number 10, looks like, that I had worked out before. So I'm not sure how you made out with uh, number 10. That included, you know, a value of one half, and it included a b value of two. Looks like for cos. So, so this is the blue graph right here. You see, it's uh, it's got half the amplitude, and it's also got half of what normally would be the period length. Okay? Any questions? 5.2 is basically putting, um, adding C and D into the, uh, the transformations and putting them all together. Okay? Uh, so here's, here's 5.2. Uh, we talked about A and B, and this was question number nine from your assignment. So, uh, again, just real quickly, uh, the A value is two here, right? The A value is 2, and that talks about the amplitude. So the amplitude is 2. The B value, color, the B value is 1, and so the period is 2 pi in radians. What is it in degrees? What's 2 pi in degrees? 360, right. Okay, you got that, good. If we skip down to D, the amplitude is 3, and what's the period length um, if B is 1 half? Uh, well, it's double what it would normally be. It's not necessarily 2, okay? It's not just the reciprocal, but it is 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. So it's it's double, yeah, what it was. I saw someone flash 2 there. It's double what it was, but the period length itself is 4 pi. So don't say the period length is 2. Just be, just be careful. The period length would be 4 pi, or double. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that's what, that's what A and B does, and... You know, just a refresher, this is what it looks like. Y equals to be A sine B X. Okay, so A and B. We know that what they do to the graph. Okay. So here is number six as well. I thought um, I'd just go over this real quick. It's a little fuzzy there. I kind of blew that graph up. 
But what graph would this be and why? Number, letter A here. So which graph is this? Um, does it look like a coast graph or a sine graph, do you think? Okay, good, coast, because it starts up high and it ends up high for one cycle, right? So at zero, we're starting up here. What kind of clues are we looking for in the graph to try and match this up? Amplitude, okay, very good. The first thing that you should notice about this graph is that it doesn't start at one, there's one. It starts at three, okay? And so that means that A is 3. And there's only one choice up here where A is 3. And that's the A value. Okay? We could double check to see if, uh, you know, what the period length is. The period length goes from, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. That's one complete cycle. And so B should be 1. And of course B is 1 up here. So this all kind of makes sense. Okay? So A goes with A from number 6. All right. Um, okay. If we're talking about a negative sign, and this was asked yesterday, uh, instead of a sign, you know, normally going like this, okay, up, and then uh, down to oops, going above above one there. If sign goes up first for a positive, right, and coming down to uh, negative one. Alright, give me a second. There it is, negative one. So this would be a positive sign. So a negative sign is when all of these positive values here would be multiplied by negative, so they become negative. So it's flipped. And remember with a negative A value when we were talking about transformations in chapter one, it's a flip in the x-axis. Right? So that, that all relates back to what we did before. Okay, question? Question? You good? Do you have a question? No? You sure? Okay. Okay, moving on. Okay. So this is, this is basically where 5.2, the new notes 5.2 start. We're talking about now C and D. And so what I've got for a first example here is just to say, hey, let's remember what C and D uh, meant in the past. So recall what the um, parameter C and the parameter D, uh, uh, how they affected a regular kind of normal graph in the past. So this is a, a quadratic, right? Uh, and the original graph, of course, if we're looking at C, okay, so here is C kind of including the sign. We'll talk about that in a minute. And here's D. <clears throat> so if we remove those, what we have left is Y equals X squared. So this is the sort of parent function. Okay, that's the parent function. And if we were graphing this, right, we would, uh, it's a vertex would be at zero, zero, right? Uh, if we go over two units, we're going up four units. If we go over three units, we're going up nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so we have this parabola. It, it is symmetrical, right? Uh, so it's it's evenly divided by the y-axis there. So in sort of just dotted line like we had before, this is the parent function. So that's y equals x squared. Okay, and again, you can graph that just rough sketch there if you want. But what, what we learned before was that this particular value here, okay, the C value, this value, it shifted the graph, right? These two, C and D, shifted the graph. Do you remember which way we move the graph when the number is inside the brackets with the X in this case? It's which way? Is it up or down or left or right? Which one? Left, right. Yeah, how do you remember? Well, it's in with the X. The X axis goes left, right, okay? It's east, west here, left, right. So that's the motion, that's the movement of the graph. It's attached with the X. It's gonna either move it left or right. Now, if we look at the sign in here, X minus two, what, what does, which way does this go? I taught you how to look at this. Which way does this go and why? Okay, it goes to the right, yeah, because this is a negative. Now, really, 
um, the C value is positive 2, which means it moves.